Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Halen Group Local Professionals and Heroes series. And this time we have two very special guests. And I absolutely love and admire the work that they've done. And I cannot wait to introduce them to you guys. So today we have Grace Cow and also Jennifer Ng. Um, and I want to say welcome to this uh, YouTube channel and also share with our audience about your stories. I, I cannot wait. And you know, I've been asking you guys for weeks now to come on here so that I can ask you guys questions. So I hope you guys are doing well today. We are, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yes, Good, thank you. Great, me. of course. And um, how about Jen? Would you like to start and uh, telling uh, the audience what do you get? What do you do? Uh, so I uh, basically do chief of staff work. I work in business operations for a major tech company mm -hmm. here in Silicon Valley, and uh, I've been I've been doing this for a while now. So I'm always looking for ways to reinvent myself, like to try out different things. So you right now you're basically working from home too, I assume. Yeah, I, I have been working from home since um, I think like February now because um, my baby actually came down with a bad flu right before the lockdown. So oh. it was like even longer. So um, we're all just kind of in survival mode over here. And how many children do you have? I have two bonus kids and one toddler of my own. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you full definitely house. handful also. The two older kids are actually like, they're real, they're like kind of like dream kids. <laughs> like they're like really well behaved, but I guess the karma kind of paid me back, right? Because the third child is like a wild animal. <laughs> it's not a third one, it's a charm, but okay. But at least you have two older ones maybe to control him, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, they're a great help. <laughs> good, good. And, and Grace, what about you? Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um of three kids. I have a six and a half year old, a two and a half year old, and an eight month old. And you definitely have a hands full right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Yes. <laughs> and so thank you very much for being on here. I know it takes a lot of coordination in order for uh, you to come on to this interview. And, uh, you know, as we, we ourselves know that the way I met you, Grace, is because I saw your Facebook page um, during that crazy wildfire season yes. and uh, I saw at first it was about the Bay Area, Bay Area moms helping other moms yes. and uh, I know you later on you guys changed the name of the Facebook group to Bay Area families helping CZU, LNU and SCU fire evacuees and survivors so do you mind to share a little bit about like how did you guys come up with that and how did it start? Well I think when Grace and I were first uh, chatting about this you know, Grace is actually the one who lives in Santa Cruz County. And so she's the one with a lot of the connections to her friends and neighbors who were directly affected by these fires. And when this all started, I, I think it, you know, it was just a bunch of moms wanting to help out other moms. And many of those in Grace's community end up, ended up getting displaced over to my side of the hill in uh, the San Francisco South Bay. So all it was, was it's just very simple. We just wanted to connect our two mom networks together, get those folks and families the, um, the resources and contacts, contacts that they needed, um, you know, just directly and uh, timely. Yeah. So that's how it all started. And Grace, actually, you were victims in this case, in a way, you, you were evacuee. Yes, I was evacuated. <laughs> along, you know, I, I'm pretty active in our Scotts Valley community. And um, so all of us, you know, well, my friends first in the mountains got evacuated, obviously first, cause that's where it all started. And then, and then we ended up being one of the evacuees. And, um, and so, you know, we ended up in a, um, you know, just like with everybody else displaced. And, and it was really like my friend, Jen and um, young me, they, you know, offered to, I mean, we actually got a lot of offers from help, but they went, they came and directly like dropped stuff off. And honestly, you know, I feel like we're very lucky because financially we could, we could have definitely afforded to just get this stuff on our own, but, you know, being under that amount of duress during, a, during, you know, during a pandemic, during being evacuated, being in a place that you don't expect to be just having people offer to help you and, you know, take some things off of your mental and emotional load. It was, you know, it was, it was so helpful and so meaningful. And I just thought, you know, oh, 
yeah, that's just kind of where it all came from. It came from, and also when um, I and we ended up long term being evacuated to Palo Alto, and I sent out you know a message to the Palo Alto moms there, and they were like, "Oh my gosh, here!" And like literally within hours, I had people dropping stuff off to me that I needed. Wow. Yeah. I. I mean, you at first was the victim, and then that next thing I know, I saw you guys basically the organizer for this whole Facebook Facebook group. I remember when I joined, it was just like maybe a couple hundred people on the group. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, it was like within one day or two days, it became a few thousands. I was just like, whoa, how did this yeah. pass like wildfire? Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, within five days, we had over 4,000 people. It was insane. Yeah. yeah. And then the group, what was the purpose of this group? And what, what were you guys trying to achieve by creating this Facebook group? Well, like I said, in the beginning, we were just a couple of moms trying to help out other moms. And um, in in the first like day, I think it was, I was asking Grace, like, hey, tell me what your friends need, okay? Like, I'll tap into my networks, and I'm sure that they will want to help. I mean, that's the thing that um, I'm not sure if people realize is people do want to help. Like, they are almost like thirsty to help, you know? And then, but then on the flip side, when you have, um, when you're an evacuee, it's just um, obviously a lot going on at the time. So you oftentimes don't even know what you need or what you want. You're just trying to gather your bearings, you know? So any kind of load we can take off of these um, fire evacuees, like we, that's what our, our goal was. And in the beginning, I was literally like pinging Grace, like, tell me what they need. Okay, what about this? What about this? And what else? And then it got to be kind of um, inefficient, I think. And Grace is actually the one who came up with the idea to create a, a Facebook group to kind of eliminate ourselves as middlemen and make it more of a peer-to-peer -peer model. So I thought she was crazy. Okay, I was kind of like, are you serious? Are you, are you sure we should do this? <laughs> and it like you actually never even had an experience to create these kind of organization or... No, yeah, no. no, no I, I, none of us have any crisis management experience at all, um, but it was, I mean, it, it, it was amazing to see um, people just coming together. And for, for us, like we were just figuring stuff out along the way. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, both of you, you, although you don't have that kind of experience, both of you just have that heart and the passion to help at that time for that yes. specific purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and ironically, even before this, um, I've been a stay at home mom for about eight years now. And I was lamenting to myself, like, I don't really have any like marketable skills. I don't have like a traditional resume. And I really was actually kind of down on myself about the fact that like, you know, I was like, I don't even like, you know, just kind of having that existential crisis of like, what is my worth? What is my, you know? And so when this came along, I was kind of like, oh, I can do stuff. And I think that was actually like, you know, it was definitely a morale boost for me because I was like, you know, it doesn't matter if I have um, paid work experience or not. Like these kind of things, you just kind of learn as you go and you really just have to have the drive and the motivation. And, you know, and, and sometimes like some of the stuff that we tried failed spectacularly. Like I remember when we first were like, sure, anybody can ask for money. And then it was like, you know, that was totally yeah. disastrous. But then we figured out, oh, okay, we'll just make it so that anyone can ask, but we put it on a specific thread so it doesn't, you know, so we just like, it was like the craziest learning curve that I have ever been through. I mean, we would just figure stuff out as we go, like hour by hour, things would change and we would just figure that out. And you guys were so organized as well, because obviously I would ask you like, hey, have you heard of this person and this name? And then every time I ask Grace, Grace says, yes, I know this story. I know what's going on. Wait a minute. Let me look at my list. And then I was like, you got lists for every single victim. So, I mean, it, it was amazing to see how you organize all these all these information and then basically putting people together to make sure that every single person is receiving help. But very much like a startup environment, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have to wear m multiple hats and, um, you know, ask and accept help when you need it. Mm -hmm. And just, it's like all hands on deck. Um, I think um, everyone who was involved in any sort of uh, leadership role in the Facebook group, I mean, I, I, I would have a conversation with Grace about like, oh, I secured additional storage space for some of these donations, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working with so-and-so about this right now and blah, 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 blah. I'm going, I'm going off about it. And then she's like, wait a second, who is that? And I'm like, 
um, I don't know, she's a woman who offered her her house for storage. So I took up her, took her up on it, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, are you gonna help me? Are you gonna help me? Like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, and you guys organized in a way where somebody actually offered uh, this place, a, a church, um, to provide yes. space for all the donations. Yes. So Sarah Pearson, who is amazing. I mean, I think she came in on the second. One of my friends was like, hey, do you need a donation site? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so she connected me to Sarah and I talked to Sarah and they actually had never done like anything like this on their own either. They had always worked with other organizations and really, you know, they took on a huge role because they became our first distribution site. And you know, because of the nature of what we were doing, it's like, there's not really a lot of time to, you know, kind of work out logistics. You just kind of have to go. And so we were like, we just need something now. And she's like, okay. And then literally, I think it was like within, I don't know, I want to even say like three or four hours. She's like, okay, the site's up. And it was like, oh, okay. And so, and, and what Jen was saying was right. Like we had so many wonderful team members like people that were like hey I want to help and we're like okay you're an admin you can help us I mean yeah I mean honestly though without and I have to say it was all they're all women and all of these women mm -hmm. just stepped up and helped us with these huge roles and these huge responsibilities that we never expected to grow so you know so big and but everyone just kind of stepped up and did what they could. Even if they didn't, just just like we didn't know what we were doing, they didn't know what we were doing. Or, well, some of them knew, like Deborah, um, knew what they were doing a lot more than the rest of us. But everyone just kind of, I mean, I, it was really just masterful to see how everyone was able to just do what they could. Yeah, I mean, as you were talking, I keep getting goosebumps. <laughs> thinking about that kind of uh, reaction from everyone and I'm, I'm just kind of like quietly observing I'm just like my gosh and I kept telling my husband like this is amazing all these moms just stepped up and then started helping each other out and uh, I, I was so impressed and uh, at the same time I saw so many people really receive the help but I know we talked a little bit about this earlier is that sometimes some people, unfortunately, they do take advantage of this situation, right? Um, and you try as much as you can to really, you know, vet this person. Uh, I mean, can you t talk a little bit about like, did you see people who actually took advantage of this? And then, um, and also, what is your vetting process? Um, you know, I didn't, like I, I, I tried to be as fair as possible. I mean, I'm pretty active in our community. So basically if I knew the person directly or if I knew of a person that knew that person directly, I kind of vetted through that. You know, there was no perfect system. I don't know everybody. I tried to do my best to kind of go through and make sure that they were, that they seem like a legitimate person. And, um, you know, I mean, to me, I had to kind of keep in mind, like, okay, if somebody gets a free meal or somebody gets some free groceries, like how much does that really hurt right. us? And how much does that really hurt their intentions? And for me that, you know, it was more important that more like the people that needed the help got the help. And if a few people that didn't really need to get it, then, oh, well, you know, yeah. cause you don't want to make it so hard for people to get help. That's so that you, that you screen out more people. Exactly. But, you know, I think we all tried to do the best that we could to vet people as best. And, you know, and I tried not to focus and to get too down by the people that were, you know, trying to take advantage or, you know, being, uh, making things difficult, but, you know, yeah, because um, so many, it it's just how it is. There's no perfect system, but at the end of the day, you just want the most people to, that need the help, get the help. And that was what was important to all of us. I think that was kind of our mission was, you know, we just help whoever needs help. And if some people get through that really didn't need it, then, oh, well, not, you know, it's not really, yeah, not the biggest deal. And I think, I think that's just a byproduct of, of how our group operated because yes. I think one of the hallmarks of and what makes us um, unique and successful is um, the speed that we were able to operate at. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, because like I said earlier, like the whole, the, the whole point of this was to get people connected to resources in a very timely manner. Um, you know, kind of just tearing down any red tape, any kind of bureaucracy, like you want it, you ask for it, you receive it, you know? Yeah. And I think the kind of, um, you know, fraud that you're, that you're referring to, it just comes with the territory. So um, a lot of folks that came on board to help us who 
did have a background in managing the fires at uh, in Paradise last year, for example. You know, um, they they spoke extensively about how this stuff does happen, but you know, we can't get let that stuff get you down. And I think overwhelmingly, um, we want to encourage people to ask for help too, because um, I think what I personally um, heard a lot of um, I I heard a lot from uh, from the fire evacuees. Where, and I think Grace touched about um, touched on a little bit earlier enough in this um, uh, conversation too is he, everyone thinking like oh you know what there's there's so many others who are uh, so worse off you know like I, I don't need the help I, I I don't I don't need it you know I'm I'm okay I'll be okay you know but really what people have to realize is I mean <laughs> I feel like the South Bay families were like ready to pounce with help <laughs> you know it's yeah. like let us help me help you <laughs> you know like. I mean, that it's is just so true. That's it, so it is because, I mean, we we work together a little bit, and uh, it's funny because I talk to talk to my team about like, okay, you know, let's help these families right now, and that was the first question. What, what if some people took advantage of this um, this program, our grocery assistance program? And I was like, well, you know what? At this point, if we can help, let's say, ten families, and then there's one who's lying about it. I think at least we are helping the other 10 families. It's fine, it's okay. Um, and I do think that because sometimes we are we are thinking about that all the time. It's like, well, what if they're lying? Then you actually stopping yourself from helping other people. We need to, just like what you guys are saying, we need to understand that that is gonna happen, but there are a lot more people who, which I have talked to is like, they do need help, but they they're afraid to ask for help. So, um, I mean, I think for you guys to be able to put these resources together, especially Grace, you were evacuated. You were in the middle of evacuation and then you were still putting all these things together. You were still, yeah. I would, I would text insanity. you at midnight and she was like, yes, let me find out who this person is for you. <laughs> Grace was online like 24 seven. I mean, yeah. I, I was so amazed at how she had you know, three small children to, to take care of. And she was taking the lead on such a huge, I mean, what ended up being a huge, you know, effort. I mean, it was a, it was a team effort, but I mean, I was just like, what? I mean, honestly, I neglected my children a lot. Um, <laughs> my, my mom helped so much and my husband is very supportive. Um, uh, it was, it was really, you know, but he was also working and kind of quarantined from us because he had just gotten back from um, from a flight. And I am very coronavirus, uh, you know, very very coronavirus anxious. So yeah, it was it was it was a lot. But I also felt inspired to help because of people like Jennifer, who had helped me. And I, you know, and also to be honest, I had no idea what we got ourselves into. And then once we were in it, I was like, well, I can't stop now. I mean, we, we are helping all these people. Um, but it really, what for me, the biggest thing that came out of it was just like, you know, and I've always respected working moms and Jen was working a full-time job while she was doing this, which to me like blew my mind. Like she's a full-time <laughs> mom, full-time, a full-time, you know, full-time working and it's not like an easy job at all and no job is easy but like you know she has a high stress job on top of that I mean I was in admiration of all the people who were able to you know just dedicate their time who didn't really have the time but they just you know figured out how to do it so you know it wasn't I think a lot of us didn't get much sleep <laughs> no during the time yeah, yeah. it sounded like you guys probably didn't get much sleep because it's like whenever message yes I get a response right away I'm like okay yeah <laughs> No, it's so, like I said, it was, it's all about speed and getting, you know, yeah. like we, we had, I think we built up um, a lot of credibility in the community and people knew that, Hey, if you need something, go join this Facebook group, you'll, you'll get what you need, you know? And so, um, I, I think it, there were so many people, I mean, I think Grace especially did a fantastic job of, um, following up with each and I mean these are individuals okay so like she's following up making sure that nobody is kind of left behind or um, just kind of left left hanging you know so uh, a lot of these folks are um, already in a very vulnerable space so um, it was our commitment to them that hey we're we're going to help you and even when we eventually archived the group we left them with many resources that they could take advantage of still. 
That is amazing. I mean, again, you guys have definitely helped, if not hundreds. I mean, I, I think you guys have helped at least hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, who were being evacuated from all these fire. And it, it is the worst fire that we've ever experienced in California. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people actually did lose their house. And uh, I mean, how how would you recommend other people to continue to help these fire victims? You have a way to actually suggest people to go about it, donating or figure things out to help right now? Um, so we so we kind of we we didn't want to leave anybody just behind. I mean, Deborah and um, there's Jody and Michelle Wilder. There's and Rebecca. I don't, want, I can't, I don't want to butcher her last name, but there are a bunch of people. And I think their their website is screlief.com. I want to say it is. I might I might have to check on that, but. Um, they have taken over. They're still, they're still doing it. I mean, they, they are incredible. Like Jen likes to describe them as the adults. They are definitely yes. the adults. I mean, they know yes. what they are doing. They are yes. dedicated. You know, and I hate to admit it, but it was not sustainable for me to continue it past, you know, we, we did it for 15 days. And then I think I was like, I, I like, I really could not. And I feel terrible because obviously there's still a need, but you know, there are other groups that have taken over and are still doing it. And Susan Andrews, who is the, you know, um, was the, is the creator of the big Santa Cruz County resource, fire resources group. She's amazing. And we worked actually in conjunction with a lot of other groups that were all trying to do the same thing. And I think one of the biggest things that came out of it was like realizing there's not ego in this and there shouldn't be is like, we're all just like, we want you to get the help, you know, whether it's from our group or any other group, we don't care. Just get the help that you need. You know, and yeah. I think, I think honestly, like that was probably, it was probably one of the most inspiring times that I've ever been through just to see like, like Jen was saying, like people are like thirsty to help. Like at one point we had mo like way more helpers than people that needed to be helped. Like I would yeah. say like, you like, you would go, oh, um, I'd be like, oh, you know, this person needs a, a dog bed. And there'd be like 15 offers for dog beds. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it just like, it, re it really renews your, your hope in the human spirit. Cause you realize like in, you know, deep down, most people are just, you know, generous and want to help others when they're in a time of need. You know, this is such a great message because honestly, during this time, during this pandemic and our, everything that's happening right now, um, including our political environment, what you're saying is like very encouraging. It's like, it's, Still, we have so many great people in our community. Uh, and even though you were saying you make it sound like it's only 15 days, but that 15 days helped so many people and that it had made such a huge impact just because two of you had started this and then now they know where to go for uh, the continuous help because yeah, we all have our own lives. It is difficult. I mean, even though you're saying like you're you said you're just a stay-at-home mom, but it's not just a stay-at-home mom. I, I always think that people who stay at home mom, they work so much. And I feel like at least I have some time away to be in my working world, but it's a lot of work as a stay-at-home mom as well. So yeah, more than a full-time job, because you're working 24 seven. Yeah, you don't get you don't get a lunch break or nothing. Yeah, but 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 working moms have to do all this, you know, especially during a pandemic, you have to do the stay-at-home mom plus Plus you have to function as an adult in a full-time job. You know, I mean, I have so much more respect for you. I mean, everyone's life is hard, but I mean, and honestly, Helen, we have to thank you too, because it was people like donors like you that made all of this possible. If it wasn't for people like you and Echo Compassion and even like, you know, all these restaurants like um, Hobie's, um, Camille, she, she donated uh, breakfast every day. I mean, all the, you know, Tutu School, there were so many generous donors that made it all possible. And I think that was also so inspiring to see like, you know, and everyone is also suffering from the pandemic and they still like, even while they are struggling with the difficulties in business with a pandemic going on, they were still trying to offer and help all these people. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you to both of you. Both of you are such inspiration to me. And that's why I couldn't wait to share your story out to everyone else. It's 
15 days of very, very, very hard work on top of what you guys were doing and experiencing. So I, I truly want to say thank you. And actually giving me that opportunity to be able to help out too. You know, there are a lot of people like what you say, ah, we're really thirsty to help. <laughs> it's like, give me a channel, how to do it. And you guys gave, gave us that channel. So truly, thank you. Thank you so much. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, next time, I hope that uh, we're going to continue to interview more local heroes here. And today, I'm so happy to have Grace and Jen here. And if you guys want to uh, hear more of this story, feel free to connect with me and uh, I can connect you with them too as well. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also come back often to check out our new videos. And also every second Wednesday of the month, from 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific time, we will be doing our Bay Area Housing Market Town Hall and bring to you a lot of great speakers and to share a lot of real estate information. And I look forward to see you back. Bye.